Hello, I'm Hamish, and recently I found myself playing a lot of Race Around the World on Roblox. If you haven't played it, I strongly recommend you do. It's really well made, and it deserves way more attention than it has. So, seriously. Go play it. Time to just jump on into the review. This map symbolizes everything I hate about existence, living, playing race around the world at 2 a.m. The list just goes on. I strongly hate all the challenges in this map, starting with the biggest offenders, the under and over choice challenges. It really feels like there are no good options. The under challenge is so unbelievably tedious and slow paced, and the over challenge Every time you think you got it down, those stupid NPCs beat you by like a tenth of a sliver of a millimeter. Also, traveling from island to island is really cool, but it just complicates things way more than it should. And don't even get me started on the tattoo art challenge. I always hear other players saying, it's not that bad, or don't worry, they nerfed it, and I'm here to say they're lying. <laughs> I cannot do a steady hand test under pressure, and they always give me the worst possible shape to do. The heart. It is so annoying, and I have to move really slow just in order for me to pass within two hours. <laughs> Whenever I see that we are going to French Polynesia, I start crying very loudly, and now I can't see because there's water in my eyes. So I'm not a big fan of this map. <laughs> I have some gripes with this map. First of all, I was playing in Giza and I had little legs on to make me shorter because haha ha, funny character. No! Turns out the joke was on me since I couldn't hit the flags while riding the camel. This map seems to get harder for me to do every time I do it. And climbing up the pyramid is the most RNG dictated challenge and it is so annoying to do. Giza. Bestie, what are you doing? This map makes me feel an intense, visceral rage that no other thing in the world can do. Ex except French Polynesia. Uh, French Polynesia is worse. That's why I ranked it worse. Agra is one of my least favorite maps. I don't like the marble showroom duel since it makes or breaks your run, and if you fail on the duel multiple times, your only chance of not getting to the checkpoint last is by spending basically your entire life savings. And on top of that, finding the elephants can vary in difficulty. One time you check and all the elephants are next to each other, and the other times you're just praying to find one of the three elephants. Although if you do do well in the duels, then you can pretty much just walk to the finish. So there are some positives to come from this location. Bonjour, Paris, <laughs> average. <laughs> okay, okay. This map is probably the most basic cookie cutter map in the entire game. That, that's not saying I don't like it, it's just saying when I think of Race Around the World, Paris isn't in my mind. I mixed up Paris's painting challenge with Australia's memory match trial, which is saying a lot about how I think of Paris as a map. Its challenges are fine, I guess? I don't know, they just seem so vanilla. <laughs> Johannesburg is an interesting case. One of the challenges takes forever to finish, and the other challenge can just take mere seconds. They contrast so much, I often forget that they come from the same map. Also, this map is home to the one choice challenge I have never completed. The horizontal challenge. And that's because I attempted it one time and never found it. I've been traumatized ever since. I, I'm, I'm not going back there, and you cannot make me go back there. I feel very mixed on this location. 
On one hand, the Simon Says Memory Tango Challenge is super fun and only at times frustrating. But on the other hand, my dumb little baby brain don't know color. And no, I do not want to elaborate. Don't ask. Apart from me just being a little goofball, I think this map is fine. I don't hate it or anything, but I don't exactly love it. It's just kind of there, you know? Like, like, okay, I see this is where we're going, and I'm not mad, so by that, I guess it's fine? 10 out of 10. Here we are at one of the finale maps. This map is beautiful on a design level, but falls flat on a gameplay level. For finale, I expect something bold and challenging, and this finale teeters on the edge of unfairness. The finale challenge is all about finding a singular face out of a crowd of faces, but getting a face that pops out or having your face be on a mannequin that's staring right at you can be an unfair advantage. Of course, there is a skill element to check faces quickly, but it's not skill-based enough to make it feel like an earned victory. When you win on this map, it feels like the luck gods have given mercy on you, and not that you outdid or outsped everyone else. And I'm sure the people who didn't win at the finale feel a tiny bit cheated, and rightfully so. On an unrelated note, the other challenge here goes by so much faster that it's almost forgotten about, which is sad, but overall justified. Rio de Janeiro is a map that I like, specifically the rhythm game challenge, since I like rhythm games, and I feel like that challenge is low-key helping me improve my overall accuracy, so no complaints about that challenge. But what about the other one? I also like it. Hitting the targets is a fine addition to the roster of trials that this game holds. My problem with this map is the way you get to the checkpoint at the end. You can either climb up a lot of stairs, or pay extra to skip that and just get straight to the checkpoint. This really drains money and can be annoying if you decide to walk up those stairs, only to end up in 7th place. Also, if you want to go down the stairs faster at the next location, you have to do the same thing! It wastes a lot of money, and I really don't like that way of transport. Which sucks, because I think they're bringing it back with the next map based off the treasers. Okay, listen. Yes, Istanbul technically has a similar challenge to Agra, but the difference is... I like this challenge more. <laughs> Here, you just move your mouse around a square, but in Agra, you had to jump on tiles, and it would be a blessing if they actually turned yellow. Okay, that's my mini rant over. Time to get into the map itself. Istanbul does the dual challenge aspect right. It's quick, it's easy, it's fun. And the second challenge is the creme de la creme of finding stuff in challenges. Since finding stuff in the second challenge is so much more chill. Mostly because the other find stuff challenges are in the finale. But my point still stands. Alice Springs is pretty unique. I really like the challenges in this location. They both feel fun and fair. It also keeps suspense high by showing you everybody else and how they're doing. It is incredibly hard to not stare at how somebody else is doing and then compare that to how you're doing. Also, I've grown a fascination to Uluru. It just looks so smooth and I kind of want to roll down it. 
Anyways, back to Alice Springs. The map looks like a little plain, but I get what they're going for. Alice Springs is an honorary member of the good places to visit in the game. It's, it's on honorary. It is one of, it's one of the places in the honor. It's not honorary. It's a member. Hanoi is a really pretty map. I'm a big fan of the challenges as well. Jumping over the bamboo sticks is my favorite since I can easily clear that. As, as you see here. Easily. Moving on, I really dislike the wet path option. It is so slow to complete and there's an 88% chance you'll fail at least once. But apart from that small, avoidable annoyance, the entire map is stunning. They really outdid themselves. Like, are you seeing this? Play the game. London is one of the most fun maps for me to play. I've kinda learned how to solve a 3x3 puzzle semi-fast. And the choice challenges go so hard. I prefer doing the baking route rather than sorting, half because I can never tell apart the red fish from the pink fish, but also half because baking is just so much more fun than putting fish in a bucket. Which is why if you get rewinded on this map, it is instant elimination. Nobody can recover from baking lemon meringue pie and sorting fish into buckets. It's just not possible. I love this map. Vancouver is a map that my opinion on has changed drastically over time. When it first came out, I hated it. I would keep failing on the adventure park, specifically the second part. But after learning how to do that easily, my opinion on this map has changed a lot. I went from hating it and loathing whenever I saw we were going there to loving it and getting excited whenever I heard we were going there. Grouse Mountain's searching challenge is one of my favorite challenges to do. It's unique and memorable, and at the end of the day, isn't that what we love about our challenges? I don't typically pick the scoring option, but I have tried it and it's also pretty solid. The main thing I really like about this map is the feeling of going from a cold, snowy mountain to a green, lush, dense forest makes me feel like I'm exploring a perfectly preserved location, and I'm a big fan of all of it. The much better finale map. This map is leagues ahead of every map for its simple yet challenging challenges. The donut challenge is a great example of this. A part of it is always randomized, so you can never fully get a concrete strategy that works a hundred percent of the time, although it's randomized in such a way that it isn't noticeable. This challenge is the perfect blend of everything into one complete package. Side note, I call it the donut challenge, even though it's a multi-choice because Nobody picks Shop Hopper. I'm sorry, Shop Hopper users, for being underrepresented in the community, but do you actually exist? The final flag finding cha challenge is amazing. It is high stakes since you can see everyone's progress, and the trial relies on your ability to find a needle in a haystack. There are also so many different ways to complete the, in the challenge. You can pay it by skimming over all the flags and moving fast, but probably missing a flag and having to look again. Or you can go slow and check every flag thoroughly, but doing that might take too long and somebody else snags the win. Overall, these challenges are the best as they blend every good element about this game into two perfect ending trials. And also the shop hopper route which is there, too. So, that is my ranking. You know, I recommend you create your own ranking. 
it it doesn't have to be a video you can write it with a book and quill if that suits your taste also sorry if my ranks were predictable like ranking the finale the best one but here at the hammer's weird youtube channel we embrace our basicness thanks for watching and good night if it's morning where you are it's gonna be a long day bestie you can get through it